Father, thanks for our time together. Thank you that you love us. Thank you for your word. And uh, pray, Lord, that this would just uh, do a work uh, in our hearts and minds, Lord, and help us to see um, Paul's heart and his writing to the Church of Colossae and just uh, how we ought to live our lives. And uh, so we just pray that that would happen today. We, we ask that we'd have a heart and mind ready to receive your word in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're in Colossians. There, there's a lot of warning against false teaching, and Paul uses uh, different language throughout throughout the book. And uh, as I go, as I'm going through Colossians, actually studying, I haven't really studied this in a long time to go through it. I didn't realize how much Paul was addressing uh, false teaching <coughs> of, of different sorts. So uh, today in Colossians two verses sixteen, my wife's looking at me. That's why I smiled. Uh, Colossians 2, 16 to 23, um, the main point that I want to make today is be careful. Be careful is the main point. So let's read verses 16 to the end, 16 to 23. Does therefore let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath? These are a shadow of things to come. But the substance belongs to Christ. Let no one disqualify you, insisting on asceticism and worship of angels, going on in detail about visions, puffed up without reason by the sensuous mind, and not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body, nourished and knit together through its joints and ligaments, grows with a growth, grows with a growth that is from God. If with Christ you die to elementary spirits of the world, why, as if you are still alive in the world, do you submit to regulations? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. Referring to the things that all perish as they were used, according to human precepts and teachings, these have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-made religion and asceticism and severity to the body, but they are of no value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh. So there's a lot of things that we that we do that are literally of no value, and and, and sometimes for the good. And so we have to realize uh, a, we can look very religious. We can go and, and feed people. We can do a lot of good, but really what's the value um, in, in sometimes being good? So I want to – and here in verse um, – where is it? In verse 18, it uses the word asceticism. It says, let no one disqualify you, insisting on asceticism and worship of angels, going in detail about visions. I want to go back because uh, a couple of days ago, uh, I, I brought up that word and highlighted it. And um, the, the church, they weren't really having the false teaching inside the church yet, but it was all around the church of Colossae and so they were dealing with uh, people being legalistic. They were teaching asceticism, which is a um, – this is uh, – asceticism renounces worldly pleasures that distinct from spiritual growth and enlightenment and live a life of absence or denial. So this is very common in like Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Islam, etc. cetera. Um, even for um, the, like the believer, if you look in, in the Bible here, we can look at uh, the Nazarite vow, like Samson, not cutting, um, not cutting your hair, not drinking wine. So it's we can look at those things, and those were the things that were challenging the church here. So uh, point number one is uh, in verse seventeen: these are a shadow, but not Christ, the substance. That's the point. They're a shadow. So these these are a shadow of things to come but the substance belongs to Christ. So the thing about a shadow is it, there's no value there. And um, and we have to realize that a shadow that this was talking about, I see RJ there, the shadow here, what is it, what is it talking about? Look at verse 16. Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food, drink, what you eat right, uh, with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. So there's nothing wrong with, with going to church. It wasn't wrong anything going to the Sabbath. Some people were doing restrictions on meals, but the reality is, is all these things were just pointing to something greater. And what is that? It's Christ. So Christ has to be the substance. We can get so caught up 
and being religious. And we can do things that, oh, I do this for whatever. But really, some of these things are just shadows. They're, they're, they're and actually a foreshadow. We look at, um, you know, even the Old, the Old Testament and some of the prophecies. We look at some of the foreshadows, and there's some value there. But all of a sudden, we hold on to, to religiosity. You know, um, you know, I think about, um, you know, for example, even like the Catholic Church specifically, for, for example, like there was a period of time where there was no meat, no meat on Fridays. And now they got fish Fridays. And, you know, the intention can be very well. But the reality is, is, is that worth anything? Is that pointing to Christ? So a lot of those things that we can do have no value in them. And there's no substance. Christ has to be the substance. And um, we need to make sure that we don't fall into false interest. Um, so false interest. The things that you and I uh, would want, right? Like maybe people are running to a point where, hey, I could, I believe that there's a God, right? But is it really Christ? And then, you know, I kind of like this over here. So kind of like we make religion into what we want it. So we kind of like stir the pot like, oh, I like that. I like that pastor on TV over there because he makes me feel good, right? Five ways to a better you. I like that place over there because it is really friendly. And I like this place over there because of this. Well, when we start doing that, we we end up losing Christ. And so we have to make sure that Christ is the substance. Um, he is the real answer. He is the real hope. He's our living hope. Why is he a living hope? Because he conquered death. Um, and he is the truth. He's the way, the truth, and the life. So we need to make sure that we hold on to Christ. We need not to, to go after things that are meaningless, that are that are really useless. So hold on to Christ. And that's why the main point is to be careful. So don't fall for the things that are just of a shadow, but really hold on to the true Christ. Point number two. Um, uh, my point is this. Do not. Do not and be careful. Do not slash be careful. Um, going back to the main point. Let's look at verse 21. Um, it says, do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. Pretty simple, right? And really, those were talking about things that are perishable, things that don't last, uh, things that don't benefit the soul. And if we look at the verses around, let's look at verse 20. If with Christ you died to the elementary spirits of the world, why, as if you were still alive in the world, do you submit to regulations? So it's like, wait a minute here. If with Christ you died... Why are you still alive to the world? Why are you still going back to the world? So we have to have this reminder that if if we really have submitted ourselves to Christ, then why are we going back to those things? And it goes on. Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. Referring to the things that, are, that will perish as they are used according to human precept and teaching. So, look, we need to be very, very, very careful about the things that we're handling, tasting, touching, like our senses. We have to understand we are emotional beings, and a lot of things can tug on the strings of, of our heart. Um, and like going back to, let's say, church and worship, uh, we could go to a place, and man, the quality of the music is great. You hear that one line, you're like, oh man, I'm going through that situation, and then, yeah, and you're drawn. What you realize is, is those songs that we're singing have horrible theology. They're all about us. They have nothing to do with him. I'm a firm believer that the songs that we sing um, are connected to the theology that we believe. So if you're going to a place where it's all about you, hey, I walk upon the water and whatever, and I get this feeling, good luck. Honestly, good luck. The songs that we sing should tell about the theology that we believe. By the way, worship. Are we worshiping ourselves? Are we, are we, is worship singing songs that make you feel good? Um, worship ought to be worship. Worship songs ought to be songs, words that come out of our mouth that exalt, lift up the name of God. Holy, 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 right? Uh, but really, we sing these songs that are about us and they're me-centered. So I find that in our mainstream Christianity churches here in America, that 80, 90% of our songs are, are, are self-centered. They're about us. They're about a story, a situation. Very few songs that we sing are really exalting Christ. Now, I will say this. There are churches who do care about the songs that you sing. And they're carefully chosen. So you will find churches, if you find churches that are teaching expositionally, which we talked about probably two weeks ago, if you have a church that's teaching expositionally, typically those churches care 
about the word of God deeply. They care about the songs that you sing. So those songs are, are chosen um, with a lot of care in those thoughts. So, friends, make sure that Christ is the main thing. He is the substance. He is that our theology comes from the word of God. Number two, um, do not handle, taste, touch things that, 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 don't, that don't last, that are perishing. We need to make sure that and be careful that the things that we're handling, tasting, touching, that, we're, that, are, that are going into our soul, um, that benefit the soul. We need to make sure that they are um, biblically sound and that they are, are, are enriching to our soul. Point number three, last point. Uh, love and discipline. Love and discipline. Our motivation needs to be love. Our motivation for why we share the gospel is because we've been given um, this free gift of salvation. We've been given it. We've been demonstrated this love by Christ. And because we know that it is by grace that we've been saved through faith, we, out of our love for Christ and our obedience to Christ, we go out there. Our motivation is love. But I also put the word discipline, love and discipline. We need to have a love and discipline for Christ. Any person that I know that is um, having a fruitful life, whether it be spiritually, business, whatever, they are very disciplined. Last night I was showing my, my baseball guys um, the, the routine of Bryce Harper. Not that I like Bryce Harper or I don't like Bryce Harper or any of those facts, but there's video of him in his routine before every single game. Before anyone else is there, it's showing his work he does in, in, in the cage before he goes out to batting practice before the game. So um, I was just showing his routine and the discipline that he has. All these athletes, the guys you see on TV, they have such a discipline. I wish the body of Christ, including myself, would have such a discipline um, that we would say, hey, I got my quiet time. I got my time with the Lord. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going I'm to study my Bible. I'm going to memorize my verses. I'm going to do all these things. And by the way, being disciplined is good, but there's also that danger that that discipline can lead to legalism and, and all, also that that discipline could lead to going through the motions, that we do it and check it off. Oh, read my Bible, got my verse for the day, did that, done. And it doesn't really mean anything. And that's why it goes back to love. Our motivation is love. And there's times, to be honest, it's hard to get up. It's hard to take the time um, to make sure that um, I'm growing spiritually. And it's all about abiding in Christ. Um, John 15, 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. We have to live with that realization that we are nothing without Christ. We're thankful that he went to the cross for us. Out of our love, that's our motivation that, that keeps us going. Even when you don't feel like it, you don't feel like doing that workout, you do it because you know you need it, and it nourishes the soul. With that being said, I'm going to close out on Romans chapter 12. Uh, Romans chapter 12. So remember, it's easy to get lost on just doing it for the sake of doing it. And saying, oh, I'm going to do this because I'm going to be more like Christ. And by the way, those are all good things. I'm not knocking that. Um, but the motivation is love. And let's see what Romans 12 has to say. Romans 12, 2. It says, I, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable, uh, which is your spiritual worship. Um, another translation would say, which is your reasonable service. It is reasonable that you and I would live in such a way after a God who's given us everything, right? His I appeal, I beg, I implore you to present your body as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God. It's very reasonable, and but the love that God has for us is a motivation that we respond out of that. So we respond out of his great love. And then in, in Romans, oh, actually it's verse 2, sorry. And, and because of that love, because of our pursuit of, of, of being a living sacrifice and living after a holy God, right, is it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by the testing you may discern what is good, will, the good will of God, what is good, acceptable, perfect. Here's the thing. This being transformed is not anything that you or I do. God transform you. We surrender. We submit. 
we, we yield over to him, and he does the transformation. He does the work. And in Romans 12, 9 to 13, check this out. In verse 9, Romans 12, 9, let love, there it is, let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Man, if we're looking for that list, right? I think it's right there, right? Well, what can I do? It's right here. And it goes on in 14. The rest, I encourage you to read Romans 12. As we get off, go back and read Romans 12. But think about that. Here's a list right here. Love, let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another uh, with brotherly affection. Outdo one another, showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in, in spirit. Serve the Lord. How? Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. What a great time that we have to do that, right? Right now, everyone's cut off from each other. But what a great opportunity we have to love others, to show hospitality, to be generous, give to the need, to the saints, and uh, to love. We have an opportunity to love people. Reach out, touch someone, um, but love, love, love. So be careful. Be careful of, of false religion. Be, and, and, and by the way, all those false religions, you look at asceticism and all those things we talked about, all those things are centered around a me-centered gospel. And a me-centered gospel is no good, right? And so I want us to, to be careful of the things that are out there. Be careful not to do so much digging that you find yourself losing Christ. By the way, I believe once you once Christ has you, he can't lose you. Once you're saved, you're always saved. So it's a reality of is uh, you can't lose what you don't have. But be careful that you don't go to those other things. That will distract you from the real thing. So stay connected to Christ. Wrestle with the Lord. Wrestle with the word of God. And I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Let's pray. Father, thanks for this time. Thank you for your love for us. And uh, thank you, Lord, uh, for Paul's heart for the church, Lord. And just the, the reminder to not get lost, not to get caught up in the things that don't matter. Help us to to focus on you, help us to keep our eyes on you, help us to love one another, help us to um, make sure, Lord, that we're spending that time with you based on the love relationship and not because we feel like we have to. And so, Lord, give us that that, that hunger, the desire, the thirst for, for you and your righteousness. Help us to chase after a holy God. In Jesus' name, amen.